very, very important. It no, is that's not, not enough. It. That's not what I want. Bad basketball. The refs killed the game, and I will be Ugh, the first this is to awful admit. Too. The Texans, who will forever regret passing on Johnny Manziel. Is that serious right now? Uh oh, Golden Boy's For coming what? back, and he wants to come back. Dancing with the stars. No. And Dancing with he the he called no, out no. Conor McGregor. Oh, shit. No. That's God. true. No. <laughs> yes. Hey, mother of this, this, I can get into. And you're listening to Scout Team Sports. We are back for our national championship special. I am Loudbeard Kyle Sanders. Right to the right of me is... Chris America, proud supporter of the 2017 co-national champions, UCF. Go Knights. And this is the man with the golden mic, and I just realized this is going to be a longer episode than I expected. Yeah, this is going to be long for you, my friend. It's not going to be long. It's going to be... I mean, really, here's what you have to say. UCF's national champions, you agree, in a discussion. I can't admit that. I mean, I, I understand you guys are ready to go in, go in for the, the fire and represent your team, but... I like them. Hey, look, they're undefeated. Great season. That was a great game against Auburn. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. If they have a parade, I'll go to it. But I'm not ready to say that they're national champions, man. It's just, it's, it's hard, homie. I'm sorry. I can't do it. So before we get into that discussion, I oh, do yeah, want to okay. bring up that we had a little debate before the Auburn game about if UCF could beat FSU. So let's go ahead and finish this debate <laughs> off real quick, if that's okay with you guys, because I'd really like to bring that up first. So before we went into Auburn, myself and Chris America both agreed that UCF could hands this, down this is an ambush, handle by the way. No, no, no. FSU. So this, this is, is how the conversation ambush. went on text I got message. You. Okay, let's go. I listened to one of our older, our, our older episodes, and Kyle had said on the episode, it was like back in August, that... UC, he was making a bold prediction that UCF was going to be better than Florida State and Florida. And so I sent a text message saying, oh, I got to give props to, to my man Kyle for, for predicting that UCF would be better than Florida and Florida State. And of course, Anthony had to say, well, FSU is still better than UCF. And that was what led to the debate that I just, I, I was fibergasted. It was a very heated debate, went back and forth. Uh, we, we took had, it to Twitter. Yeah, we did. I, yeah, I we, we copy did and pasted it his comments, took it to Twitter. Uh, a lot of people agreed with Anthony on Twitter. I was actually surprised uh, that there were so many people agreeing with it. Uh, a lot of people thought UCF didn't have a chance against Auburn either, and those people were wrong. We know they were. Any given Saturday. And, 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 and that's not to take anything away from UCF. Once again, they're undefeated. The only undefeated team in the nation, right? Right. And they, they deserve 13 it. any given Saturdays. I, I get it. Any given Saturday can happen. They won. They won out. Congratulations. I like your point, any given Saturday. I'm just going to elaborate on that just a, a hair because it means that much more being undefeated saying any given Saturday. I look back at the teams this year that were in the top four, and you look at teams like Clemson, who lost to Syracuse, right? Right. O Oklahoma earlier in the year, who they lose to? Iowa State? The Iowa State, yeah. Yeah, so you got these teams that are these big conferences winning big games, going up against what we would consider lesser teams, and they're taking an L. So to be able to win 13 games straight, it's not just, hey, they had a soft schedule. Oh, you know, it's the it's American impressive. Conference. It is impressive to go undefeated no matter what. Sean Tailgater, I believe it was earlier on Twitter, uh, was going a little bit back and forth, but he wanted to compare it to the Utah season from 2004. You know what? I completely agree. I compare it to that season. That was an unbelievable that team. That was a great season, yeah. It, it was a great season for Utah, and it's pretty comparable to that, but you know, let UCF enjoy what they've got going on, and the big problem with the whole picture is the CFP, or the College Football Committee, not giving UCF the credit they deserve. I look back at a couple of our episodes from about a month ago, two months ago, and I was sitting on there complaining, saying, 
they're not giving enough credit. Chris was agreeing with me. Anthony, you're our protagonist, so we're good with that. <laughs> well, Anthony would keep saying, well, wait till you beat USF. Wait till you beat USF. Then we beat yeah, USF. You, then it's like, well, now you got to beat Memphis. So then we beat Memphis. And he's like, beat, well, he's, you're, you're not going to beat Auburn. you got to beat Auburn. Prove something to me and beat I, Auburn. I, now it's... I that's, never, I never even gave you that shot to beat Auburn. So right. that, that, that's on me. I never gave you that shot to beat Auburn. And then I, I you haven't that. said anything really because we haven't really talked much since then um, been in sick. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they beat Auburn, and now everybody else is saying, "Well, go ahead and you're, you'll be set up for for a high ranking next year and win out again, and then you can be in the playoff." And it's just w- when does the bar stop? Well, that's I, my whole well, thing. With well, UCF. I said that you know a month and a half right. ago too. Yeah. Went out, going to next season with a high ranking. Now, obviously, you got some obstacles to the hurdle because of your coach leaving and, you know, all that other good stuff. I mean, how many recruits you guys got going to the NFL? I mean, I don't know, but last year um, – I think Shaquem will be there. Shaquem might. Dude, that, you we'll know see. what? That guy impressed me, man. You know what? I watched your defense all season, and I said, your secondary has holes in it. I don't know if Auburn just wasn't ready for it. They didn't watch film on you. I don't know what the hell it was. They didn't expose it. No, the difference but, is is that Stidham is not an elite quarterback. Like, uh, is it Flowers? Yeah, I guess so. Like Flowers, and then I don't remember yeah. what Memphis's quarterback is. And they have that Miller kid who's a really good wide receiver who's going to be playing on Sundays. So, again, like – a lot of times people say, oh, well, of course UCF put a lot of points up on there. They, they don't play any defenses. Well, I've been saying all season long, well, guess what? The SEC doesn't play any offenses. And during the bowl season, the SEC gave up 30 points a game throughout all of their bowl games. Georgia just gave up 45 or 48 points or something Oklahoma. to Oklahoma. Texas A&M gave up 55 points. To tech, or to wake to Wake Forest, Wake Forest put fifty five points up on an SEC defense, yeah. um, and it doesn't stop there. Auburn gave up thirty four points. They should have given up more if they didn't miss field goals. And then at the end of the half, um, Mackenzie Milton missed a wide open receiver going down the field that would have been a touchdown. I mean, yeah, he just he flat out overthrew him. So I, I know you guys are all hyped up on UCF. I know it. And and like I said, like I was going back to, I was making a point about your defense, how soft it was all season. It actually stepped up and stopped a, a pretty good offense in, in uh, Auburn. Uh, that number 18. Sha- Shaquem, Shaquem Griffin. He's he's by far. You know, I, the one, one thing I will get with you guys on, somebody said there's no NFL, NFL – talent on that team i seriously doubt that after watching that last game you guys got five or six good good nfl type players oh without a game. doubt and anybody who says that it's it's laughable because yeah, that's, if, that's, you, if you, you can't follow say ucf that. football ucf has constantly been putting in nfl talent is it the same as maybe florida state or miami no but there's not many schools that are at that level anyways mm-hmm. but you got Asante Samuel at one point was one of the top cornerbacks in the league. Dante Culpepper at one point was a top four, Absolutely. five, six quarterback in the league. Yeah. Um, Brandon Marshall, also top yeah. five to ten Absolutely. wide receiver in the league. But the list goes on and on and on. Bruce playing. Miller has made a name for himself in the NFL. So to say, oh, well, because they play in the American Athletic Conference, they don't put any... I was listening to Memphis Spence today. Memphis Spence, what up? Shout out to you, buddy. Listen to a show on Sports Radio America. I, I'd have to double check it, but I have no reason not to believe him. But he said that the American Athletic Conference put more more players in the NFL last year than the Big 12 did. I believe that. Ooh. And, so, Ooh. and the Big 12 is allegedly this Power 5 conference. Now, I look at the Big 12 the same way that I look at the American Athletic Conference. And that is, if you took out Oklahoma and Texas, would you consider that a Power 5 school? The who, conference? Who, no. The conference itself? Yeah. Would you consider, if Oklahoma and Texas decided we're out of here, we're going to go play in the SEC, would you consider the Big 12 to be a Power 5 anymore? No, th- those teams are the conference. So what what you're basically saying for Texas and Oklahoma is that you get to go to the playoffs because you play opponents, because you don't Oklahoma doesn't get to play Oklahoma. They only have to play Texas. Yeah. And then they play a whole bunch of other teams that everybody admits is on the same level, maybe a smidge above the American Athletic Conference. But okay, Kansas, 
I wouldn't. If you put them in the American Athletic Conference, they'd probably have the same exact record they have in the Big Twelve. They're just that bad of a football team. You know who you're letting off the hook? Who? Pac-12, man. That too. They are awful. <laughs> they are not a Power Five conference. I mean, so, I, I get you've got USC. So what are you big arguing name. for? The, are you arguing for the American to get in the Power Five? Or are you guys saying demolish the Power Five? Well, it, there's a. It's a double-edged sword. Okay. You can't just say, yeah, oh, go. we're going to have the SEC and the Big Ten and or whatever. We can't do that, right? Okay. So we have to look at it as what are we comparing here? And I think the argument this week has been UCF has had a soft schedule. They're not in a power five. They're playing bad teams, right? And so I argue that the American Conference is just as tough as the Pac-12, and I also argue with Chris that you take Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12, you do not have the same competition. It is basically the American Athletic Conference 2.0. And w- what does that mean? That means that that conference is not getting the credit it deserves, and that's with not getting the TV money that these other conferences right. are getting. So they don't have the b- deep pockets. They're losing coaches. They're doing all these things. But you've got a Memphis, a Navy, an SMU, a USF, a UCF. These teams every year are competitive. Now, they're going to have down years. UCF was 0-12 two years ago, right. which actually makes this feat of going undefeated that much more admirable. But every team has a down year. Everybody. Every team has a down year. It's a cycle. Look, it's a 10-year cycle. Just Nick, Alabama will probably never have a down year with Nick Saban as their coach until he either grows old and senile and loses it kind of the way that like Bobby Bowden did. Oh, man, really? I mean, he didn't go old and senile. Thank but you, you know bro. what I mean. Like, but you know what I mean. He, he at wore some out point, his he welcome. lost it, right? And that's why you guys forced him I, out. I think, I think he stopped coaching. And, and and you know he he invited other people in and let and let those guys take the reins. I don't see Nick Age Saban caught doing up that anytime him, soon. Yeah, I don't see Nick Saban doing that anytime. No, it soon. could be it could be another five or ten years Shit, from now. He could hand that. it over to Lane Kiffin. But did you see him yell at that coach? That, they, that's a long they say, time from now. They say all the time that eventually, at some point, the game passes the coach. Absolutely. Each coach is different. Anyways, we're we're getting beyond the point, but eventually. Alabama will go back to what they were prior to Nick Saban. In yeah. between 92 and Nick Saban, <laughs> depending on how they handle their next coaching move. Mm-hmm. So, so, so are you guys – let me ask you this. Okay, because I, I know we can go all night with this. Do you want to leave the conference or do you want to elevate that conference? Like, which one is it? Uh, I think the problem is they're not going to split the money with a new conference. The American Athletic Conference is not going to be considered a power six or be invited to that show because there is too much greed in college football. They're not willing to share the money that they have in their own pockets with other conferences. So the power five is what it is at this point. I think it would be better for the American to be considered that as a power six. I would like to see that. But I think realistically, the best um, that UCF has to offer is to go to one of the Power Five conferences to help elevate them. And that is the best option. Um, unfortunately, a conference like the Big 12, their uh, chairman comes out today, makes some statement, oh, you know, UCF's not you know, ready for the, the big show type statement. And you hear that and you're thinking, well, why do you do that? Like, what are you trying to prove? Like, you do not want to bring UCF to your conference. That's fine. Or are you just trying to get extra attention for your conference because you see all this media publicity that's going on that you think, okay, I can come out and say something and give my conference more um, attention. That way the conversation revolves around us. And that's what I think. What, what I want is I want the insanity, the insane logic of – FBS college football to stop it. I've said it several times on Twitter today. FBS college football is the only major sport in the entire world that has a system like this, a system where there's elitism, where money controls who gets to go in and who gets to go out A, a system where you guys are considered to be in the same league. Basically you're all FBS. Um, but only 
seven to only like really ten of you have a legitimate shot of playing for a national title, and we're gonna call you a national title. Um, it, it's just I sit there like a couple of times I've compared the college football playoffs to the NFL playoffs and everybody's come back with, you can't compare the two. It's apples and oranges. And I'm like, what's apples and oranges about it? They're both sports. They're both the sport of football. If the Eagles were to be left out of the NFL playoffs because they, cause somebody said a committee said, you guys really didn't play anybody this year. You only played three playoff teams. The rest of your, your uh, schedule was weak and you lost your quarterback so we don't think you're ready for the big show of the playoffs. So you guys have to stay home. If somebody, if the if the NFL were to operate that way, we'd consider it crazy. Or Vince McMahon wants to create the XFL again, right? Okay. It's already going to be sort of a laughable joke because it's not the NFL, and we kind of laughed at it the first time. If he came out and said, so I'm going to have this new football league, and the way I'm going to determine a champion isn't going to be on the field. I'm going to create a committee of 13 people, and they're going to watch the games played out, and then they're going to select four teams that they think is good enough, and they're going to change the way they explain how they're picking teams. One week it's going to be, this is what our criteria is. The next week it's going to be something completely different, and that's how we're going to determine our champion. We would be like, Vince, you're dumb. And nobody's gonna watch this garbage. So what you so I get what you're saying, but in a, a, a common man way, you just want to burn it down. Yeah, I, burn, I, it, yeah, all burn down. it all down. You, burn it down. <laughs> you guys are ready to like, burn it all down. FBS college football is the most archaic, convoluted, elitist, systematic the elitism. The only thing I'm gonna agree with you on that is I never understood why they stopped playing football after November. After after Thanksgiving, no one plays football except the conference champs, and then no one plays for another 30 days. I've never understood that. If we were to utilize that, could we make a playoff system of 16 teams? The answer is yes, because the NCAA is already doing it in a division they've called the Football Championship subdivision and that's why i asked that question because i knew he was going to be on top of it no because that's the other thing is I, I tweeted out another person i said if only the ncaa had some sort of template <laughs> in place that they've already constructed to figure this thing out and it's they do did it they do have it um the yeah, other I thing mean, I, they got they got they got march madness it's all the same right like, just let everybody play it out. I they got March understand. Madness. They have the College World Series. Exactly. They have several different they ways, ways that they've constructed of a playoff to figure it team, out. 16 pl- team playoff would be happy. If, 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 if they said, hey, look, we got 16 teams. Right. We're going to play We're gonna play a playoff. You guys would be okay with that. Let yeah. UCF fight their way all the way to the top. And, and, as, and once they set it in and they say, these are the rules for you to qualify, and it's equal to everybody – then I think eventually we'll get over the fact that there's a four-loss team in the playoffs. Because we've said in the NFL, we've said in basketball, these are the rules to qualify for the playoffs. Nobody bats an eye when a 40-42 and 42 team makes the eighth seed of the East and makes the playoffs. Nobody cares because the NBA said that's the rules, that's how you qualify to get in the playoffs. Nobody gives a damn that uh, a 48-win team in the West misses the playoffs while a 40-win team in the East goes to the playoffs. Or like in 2008, when an eight and eight San Diego Chargers goes to the playoffs because they won their division, while an 11 and five New England Patriots has to stay home. No, I completely agree with you. I, I mean, you're looking at seven and nine teams in the NFL that make the playoffs some years, and ten and six teams get left out. That example of the Patriots at 11 and five, um, part of that was because Tom Brady wasn't there. Maybe right, but it's still 11 system, and five. Yeah, I mean, 11 and five is a great record, and. It's, I can agree with you that it is completely, utterly broken. And the problem where I find is that all these, I call them old heads, these talking <laughs> guys that are, you know, retired coaches, athletic directors, all these like 80 something and 70 something year old. Paul Fine Bombs. Yeah, Paul Fine Bombs. He's been doing it for 50 years, man. Come right. on, dude. So he's stuck in his ways. So Bobby Bowden, after 50 years coaching, what kind of product were you getting on the field? Man, what man. kind of product were you getting on the field at that point? I hear it you. wasn't that good. I hear These guys you. are gotten old and moldy, and all they care about is old traditions. It's like the baseball um, analogy where 
Major League Baseball doesn't want to speed up play. They don't want to change anything because they've got all these traditionalists. And I think college football is the same way. You've got all these guys that are like, the SEC is the best. Oh, no, the Big Big 12 is the best. Oh, no, Pac-12. They can't admit that a team that is not from one of their Big 5 conferences could actually beat their teams. They don't want to admit it because of their pride, because of all this legacy quote unquote, of what they have lived on their entire lives. UCF's new to the dance. They have not been a big school as far as football goes, and they have slowly clawed their way up to where they're at today. And instead of saying, all right, you deserve a shot, they're saying, oh, no, um, you're, there's probably six or seven SEC teams better than you. No, there isn't. Right. There is not even close at to At least that many. not this year. Right. This year... You know what? I, I admit, Alabama's a great team. Georgia's a great team. They're both playing for the national championship. They both deserve to be there, but that doesn't mean that UCF didn't deserve to be in there with them. Doesn't deserve to be in that conversation to earn, hey, let's play it on the field. I'm not saying, hey, give them a championship because they didn't earn anything. I think right. they've earned everything. They beat everybody put in front of them. All the, all, the people that said Auburn was going to it was laughable that Auburn was playing UCF and Auburn is just a better team. Oh, then all of a sudden UCF beats them. And all you hear is, Oh, Auburn didn't really good up for that game because they didn't make it into the national champion or into the college playoffs. Oh, they were unmotivated. Uh, I'm sorry. If you're a senior and this is your last season playing and it's your last bowl game, the last thing you want to do is lose. What are you going to do is that, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to play in the NFL, but I'm just going to take this one off because I've earned it because I didn't, I didn't win my conference title, so I'm taking my ball and going home. Yeah. <laughs> Gus guys. Malzahn is like, you know what? I'm, I'm a good coach. They're not going to get rid of me. Screw you, I don't guys. need to, I need, I don't need to game plan for a, a peach bowl. It's not a big bowl game. You know, no big deal. So that's the other thing, too. They took is, you for granted. I mean, whatever the case may be, you still beat them. See, I don't, see, I don't even see, agree with the ticket. took, I, us, I for took us for I granted. I think they came up to play because... I they came... I, I mean, the reality, obviously they didn't come to play. They, I mean, that, no, they came to play and they got beat by the better team. And the argument I is, is they I didn't come to play because they, 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 you beat them. So yeah, here I guess. If, if Auburn showed up, if Auburn didn't show up at that game, if they just took the day off, they would have been blown out fifty-five to to three. Yeah, flat that, out, they would have just been blown out by that bad. And I don't know what quarterback would love to take five or six sacks and hit 10 or 12 other times like Stenham was and would go up to his offensive lineman and be like, hey, thanks, guys, for taking the day off. I'm glad you're unmotivated and I get to get my ass kicked back here. <laughs> Nobody does that. Like that's It just seems asinine to me that that's our excuse, that, oh, Auburn just wasn't motivated. So Stenham gets to have his ass kicked like he did in this game because it's 2018, no the, excuses the offensive loss. lineman took the day off. Like, do you think uh, Carrion Johnson, who's been injured most of the year, wants to come out in his final game and get his ass beat to to the tune of like three yards a carry because his offensive line has taken the day off? He may have lost a couple rounds in the NFL draft. Because Maybe of that. I don't know. I mean, but, honestly, that performance you kind of show. You know what? Maybe I'm not ready for the big game. So uh, I do want to give a shout out real quick. We we were talking about him a little bit. Um, I can't say enough. Watching this guy all year long, Shaquem Griffin. I found myself. I actually went to the Peach Bowl watching him live. I every defensive play, I would kind of zone in on him and just say, "Okay, what's he going to do this time?" He was disruptive on every single play, and it didn't matter if he was dropping into coverage, if he was just shadowing the quarterback, or if he was actually doing a pass rush. The dude was a wrecking. Ball the entire game playing out of his mind. He, he was he was a beast, and, you know, and Auburn was fun had to watch. Auburn had no answers for him at all. Now he, he was the best player on the field when on, UCF on, defense. Yeah, on anywhere on the field, he was the whether it was on Auburn's offense, Auburn's defense, UCF's defense, or UCF's offense. He was the best player on the field that day. Yeah, I have without to without a doubt. I have to agree with that, man. I, I really do. That he was by far the best player. And he went on uh, the Dan Lebitard show earlier today and did an uh -huh. interview. And you know what? The guy has a lot of class. You could tell he was excited. And, you know, 
everybody makes a big deal about him not having the having a hand, which I think that makes the story a little bit more sensationalized. Yeah, absolutely. But the guy, it's a good kid mm-hmm. doing a good thing. He said he doesn't get held back by his disability. He doesn't look at it as a disability. He just works for it. Wait, are you saying that um, he doesn't use it as an excuse as to why he should not show up and play football? He doesn't. Oh, okay. Good. Not like Auburn. No excuses. That's right. No All right. excuses. So let's get back to UCF National Championship, yada, yada, yada. Another thing that's kind of bothered me today is <laughs> everybody talking about UCF schedule. And I've said this a few times to people, and people would look at me cross-eyed and like I'm nuts, and, and they tweet, it, tweet at me about how nuts I am. But if you took Alabama out of the SEC and you put UCF in Alabama slot, and you gave them Alabama schedule, I would not be surprised that UCF would go 11-1 and with Alabama schedule this year. Can't argue with that. Now, Anthony, you're you're a little bit more on the other side of the fence. I'm a UCF alumni. I was at the game. I love my UCF Knights. So I'm not going to argue with Chris when he brings up really, really great points <laughs> that are absolutely 100% true. Can't be wrong at all. But I think you probably have a different perspective. So I want I want to hand the mic over to you, Golden Mike. Me. I'm 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 not going to get too involved in it because. You guys are on your horses, and and that's fine. You you got to fight for your team. You got to fight for what you believe in, and and that's all right with me. All I'm gonna say is, after watching football, after playing football for so long, of being on good teams, being on really bad teams, I just look at the mechanics of a team, and it's hard to it's hard to to put on paper. It's even hard to to explain to you guys right here. As I watch UCF, I see a good team. I don't see a great team. The defense was questionable all season. Like you said, you know, good quarterbacks eat you alive. And for some reason, like you said, Stenham maybe just wasn't that elite as we thought he was. Maybe they didn't game plan for it. Whatever the case may be, I'm not making excuses for Auburn. They lost. They lost. But as I look at your defense, as I look at your offense, as I look – I do look at your opponents. I do look at the size of a team. I look at the skill set of a team. You guys are good. Could you beat Georgia, who's a very physical defense? Well, see, that's the thing, though. A very physical offense. Could you beat Alabama with those defense and offensive linemen just beating the shit out of people week in and week out? And a healthy Alabama. I just don't see that. I, I, I don't see it. I mean, no, n- nothing against you guys. You went undefeated. That's hard to do. Playing football, coaching football, I, under, I realize that is very hard to do. It's yours. Congratulations. I don't think in a championship setting you would go toe-to-toe. Hell, you wouldn't go to toe-to-toe with Clemson. A, a healthy – very physical Clemson, a very well coached Dabo Sweeney. It's hard for me to say that you guys will be up to that caliber to beat them after watching a complete season of you. So it just is. So, with what I just said, is that if you swapped UCF and Alabama, so you put Alabama in the American Athletic Conference East and UCF in the SEC West, I believe. Both teams could equal the other team's record. Alabama would go 13 and 0, no questions asked, and UCF could go 11 and 1 against Alabama's schedule. Now, losing two, it doesn't matter. Like that's where I will, I'll make an argument with whichever team you want to say they'll lose to. They okay. could lose to Mississippi State. They could lose to Auburn. LSU. They could lose to Auburn. Gotcha. Somewhere in there, there could be that loss. But I can sit there and make an argument that. This UCF team could beat your Florida State team. I can make an argument that this UCF team would definitely beat um, Colorado State, would definitely beat Fresno State, would definitely beat Arkansas, would definitely beat Tennessee, would definitely beat Texas A&M, would definitely beat Old Miss. Maybe they would beat Mississippi State. Maybe they would beat LSU. But some, but I, but if they beat Mississippi State and LSU, would not be surprised. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Because those teams aren't very good. You sat there and you talked about how you've looked at UCF and you said they're good teams, but they're but they're not a great team. I could say the exact same thing about LSU and Mississippi State and Old Miss 
And um, who else did they play? Mercer. UCF would definitely beat Mercer. UCF could probably go eight and four, but they could also probably go eleven and one with Alabama's schedule. So I just want to say something that was impressive. I'm sorry, that yeah. was impressive. You remember Alabama's schedule without even looking right. at a computer screen or anything? Yeah, he was prepared for this shit, people. No, I mean, I've been having this shit. discussion several times. I've looked over <laughs> their schedule several times. Shit. I mean, because the, I, I've the looked the at it several times. I've, I've looked at the the schedule several times, and I'm trying to find where UCF's record would be dramatically changed because the SEC isn't good. Alabama's schedule, do you know how many teams on Alabama's schedule won a bowl game? Three. Those three teams are Mississippi State, Florida State, and Colorado, or not Colorado State, sorry, they lost their bowl game, and Fresno State. So you have an Independence Bowl champion. I don't know what Fresno State won, but I'm sure it's probably some New Mexico Credit Union Bowl, hey, that's some a good crazy bowl. bowl. That's a and great then Mississippi bowl. State won whatever bowl game they won against the Birds with Teeth. Other than that, that's nine other teams that didn't do jack shit. True, it's a true story. And uh, go ahead. No, so. They wouldn't have to play Georgia until the national championship game if they were to swap places with Alabama. They wouldn't have to play Alabama because people would look at Alabama and say, sorry, Alabama, you didn't play anybody this year, so you don't get to play in the playoffs because you're in the American Athletic Conference East. So it would be UCF. I could see UCF beating Clemson. You know why? Because Clemson is pretty much the same exact team that Auburn is. And we saw that when Auburn played Clemson and they won 14-7. to they won 14 to 7 because they're they're basically mirror images of each other. Fairly decent defenses to good defenses. I think Clemson's defense is a lot better than Auburn's. But their offenses are limited by a decent quarterback and a decent run game, but no really no big superstars are on either team. We can go about this all night long and before right. we move on, I just got one question cuz I know Kyle's a UCF believer from the first time I met him with the UCF hat and jacket on. <laughs> My boy Chris over here is a Gator fan, and and and, and, yeah. and I just it's just been bo- it's not bothering me, but I I wanted to ask because you guys are going at it on Twitter. Are you a true believer? I am a true believer. That's why I've been making this argument because I'm I believe in what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. What's right is right is UCF is a really good football team. They're better than my Gators. They're better than most of the SEC. They're better than most of the Big 12, most of the Pac-12. Big 10, I think they'd have a hard time winning in. And we can make an argument about how, like, again, if you switched Ohio State and Alabama, if they if those two switched, no doubt in my mind Ohio State goes 11-1 and one and they're in the playoffs, where maybe Alabama struggles just like Ohio State did because the Big 10 proved themselves in this bowl season. They went 7-1. and one. Ohio State played a ton of teams that won bowl games. What was that one loss? Oh, yeah. The Iowa. One bad loss. They lost to Iowa and Oklahoma. Yeah. So Iowa beat, who did they beat? No, no, no. What's that one loss in the bowl? Who? who what team lost in the bowl game? Oh, Michigan. <laughs> just like, I just like ragging on Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, right. I hear you. And, and you know what? I'm going to get behind you and say, you know what, man? If if my boy Chris says, hey, look, man, I believe in UCF, I'm going to say I believe in UCF. I'm still going to stick to my guns and say they're a good team, not the great teams that can beat Alabama and Clemson. But you know what? I'll jump on the train. UCF. Right. So let's talk one more thing before we move on because we've been talking we, about we this for 33. One? one more thing because it's the other hot topic. UCF is claiming a national championship. <laughs> I know Kyle likes it. Kyle I know. It. I know. I like it. Do you like it, Anthony? I, okay. So, so we we're a nation governed by laws, right? <laughs> we govern supposedly. By rules. That, <laughs> that's a laws. loose statement, right there. I don't even know where you're going I'm, with that. I'm, I'm just saying, like you know, hey, there's a bigger nuclear button on our <laughs> president's desk than other countries. So, yeah, we govern by those laws. you think laws. he made that bigger button? We'll talk about that later. You know, he's just like, hey, look, I want it five I've by five. I've got a bigger button. No, I honestly think somebody, <laughs> somebody went to Staples and got that easy <laughs> button, easy button and then just put it on his desk and said, that's the nuclear yeah, button. Just yeah, because good. they knew, they are like, if he really, like, if, yeah, he, he, <laughs> if we told him what the real nuclear protocol is, he'll actually go through with it. So we'll tell him this button launches a nuclear missile. 
Oh man! So then, I, I bet you he's pressed that button several <laughs> times. Just like, hey, and works. they've just showed him a video of a nuclear explosion going up. And like, oh, you blew up North Korea again, but you can't tell anybody. It's got to be a secret. Oh man, that's crazy. Okay, so look, claiming just, at an 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 NCAA or sorry, claiming a national champion, not an NCAA national You're claiming title. Claiming a national championship. I can't. Oh, fuck, man. I I wanna I wanna like it. I wanna say yes, but I I just I can't do that, man. Like, so can I ask why? It's, I guess I'm just an old man that's stuck in the in my old ways. I guess I can't do that, man. I would I you like say you're thing. an old hat? He is an old head. I'm an old head. He's an old, an old talking head. head. I'm an old talking. So head, I guess, I'm gonna man. give my perspective on the national championship. Go ahead. So, as a UCF fan, I think it's great because we're, we're building that momentum. I think what it really is is UCF saying, you guys screwed up by not giving us a chance. We can play with the big boys. We want to show you that. We went undefeated. We're giving ourselves this title of national champion because we beat every team that was put in front of us and you couldn't find a challenger that could beat us, we're going to put ourselves on that pedestal. That way, one, we have that national attention, so when it happens again, or if we have a great year next year, maybe have one or two losses, you consider us legit. Two, because we want you to know that we would willingly take on any team put in front of us, and we would show you that we are a team that is to be reckoned with. Now, Quentin Flowers, we played as at USF, Anthony's talking about a good quarterback dissecting a defense. Guess what? Quentin Flowers is just as good a quarterback that, than anybody in the SEC, in my opinion. I think Quentin Flowers is a great quarterback. So we're going up against a quarterback like that, and yeah, he put a ton of points up on the board against us at that USF game. But guess what? We're national champions. I'm going to welcome it. I'm going to take it on. But I think we've UCF'd us ourselves out of this conversation Chris America, you think we've ever UCF to ourselves today? Not just yet. I want to make one final statement. One more. Hey, I'm going to do this all night. We're going to like do a UCF special. It's we might as well just make hours. this a UCF special. We, we should. Oh we should. God. So the thing I love about this UCF national championship is that it's a claimed national championship. And why do I love that? Is because everybody's up in arms about how UCF is claiming this national title and they're calling it a joke and they're they're saying it's laughable. And then I sit there and I look at Alabama and I look at I look at Alabama's sixteen national titles and I see nineteen seventy four, they claim to be national champions. Do you know how that season ended for them? It ended with a loss to number two Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. How do you get to claim a national championship if you lost your bowl game against the number two team in the nation? Nobody cares because you claim it, it's, it's, it happens. Nobody sits there and laughs at Alabama. You can find every single national championship. My Florida Gators national championship, your Florida State national championships, hell, Notre Dame's national championships, USC's AP 2003 national championship. Guess what? They're all just claimed national championships because there's no NCAA sanctioned national championship. There's no set rules to this national championship. All it is is just, hey, this t this year we're deciding the national championship this way, and you just have to deal with it. So whoever wins between Alabama and Georgia, guess what happens at the end of the game? Alabama and Georgia still have the same number of NCAA football national championships as UCF, and that's a big fat zero. And honestly, people on Twitter sit there and said, well, now we're in the playoff era. I'm going to steal something from Mark Daniels, the voice of UCF. This isn't a playoff. This is an invitational. 13 people get in a room and they decide which four teams get invited to this to this to these bowl games. Basically, that's what it's it's still the same system. We're just calling it something new. Playoff. But guess what? It's still just bowl games and people in power saying these are the people who are invited to compete. Hey, so I'm, I'm guess with you, what? Man. The college football invitational. Guess what? It's what it is. <laughs> That's, That's what, it is. what it is. There's no that qualifiers. Is you have 13 people in a room that get to make up whatever the hell they want. If this year they want it to be that, hey, conference championship means something, like they told us with uh, Penn State and Ohio State and everything, or conference championship doesn't mean anything, whatever, hey, we get to make up whatever rules we want. Oh, schedule matters this year. Okay, that's fine. Next, next time it's uh, – 
something else. Whatever they want to make up. Now, 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 now. The, the guys in the room, this is the other thing that pisses me off. You know they all have ties to big schools. They're all like, oh, I'm a retired uh, AD from Alabama. A couple of them have, like kids that are going to school at some of these schools, none of them are unbiased. Right. They all carry a huge bias, and they take that bias and make their decisions, and the media is biased. A lot of the media in sports is through ESPN. Guess where all this money and the contracts are coming in from? So it, it, it's all a shitstorm of bias and just, it's an unfair system. It's, it's a made-for-TV event. That's all it is. It's a soap opera. It's a soap opera. And that's fine. I said to Memphis Spence today, between the WWE and, re- and sports entertainment and other legitimate sports like the NFL, NBA, whatever, between that is a gray area where FBS college football resides permanently. It's we predetermine who gets to compete, but we still let you kind of play, like, play it out on the field. But it's still like a predetermined WWE-style Kind of like how Vince McMahon looks at John Cena and says, John Cena, the crowd seems to love and hate you. You bring in lots of money. You get to play for the wrestling title. So we're talking about UCF. And, and you know what? That's that's one thing that I will say I can get behind. I can get wrestling. behind burning it down. Burn it all down. I, anything against the establishment, I'm fine with. So, hey, look, if that's what it takes for UCF and everybody else to be happy – Let's burn the whole thing down. So UCF co-national champions? You know what? Yeah, why not? UCF yep. co-national championships. Hell hey, yeah. you made a convincing argument. Yeah. I mean, if they don't have a set, set of rules and everything. and Alabama and Georgia, whoever wins that game, guess what? They get to be national champions too. They get to be the college football invitational national champions. And then UCF gets to be the co-national champions the claimed national champions just like notre dame i'm sure claimed a national championship when they beat alabama in 1974 and then alabama said but you know what we still want to be national champions too so we're going to claim it as well until the ncaa sanctions it until the ncaa gives us set rules and doesn't allow money makers and wheelers and dealers to tell us who gets in and who gets out to me it's all make-believe at this point burn it all down I agree. Burn this shit down. Burn it all down right now. All right, there's only one other thing we have to talk about with college football, and then we'll move on. Here, Here's what we need to do. This is going to be this our national no, no. championship special right here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do your one more point, and then we'll close it out with our national championship MVPs, and then we can have a separate episode, because we're going on to 45 a pretty minutes. 45 minutes of <laughs> UCF talk, and we'll go ahead and uh, finish it with that. So go for it. We all got to wear onesies. We all got to wear onesies. Yes, we do. Son of a... We do. Fucking. We do. Um, oh, if you all man. recall, we, we made a onesie bet on the on the college football invitational. <laughs> um, I'm going to just call it that from now on because that's what it that's is. That's what it is, yeah. Call a spade a spade is what my mom always said. Um, but we all got it wrong. I, I predicted... I predicted Clemson versus Oklahoma. That clearly did not happen. What did you predict, Kyle? Alabama versus Oklahoma. If that didn't happen. What did you predict? I got, uh, who did I get? Georgia. Georgia versus Clemson. You did? Yep. Yeah. So all of us were wrong. We forgot that there was one other scenario that could play out. <laughs> we needed a fourth member of the show. <laughs> yeah, oh, where's been. Linsky when you need him? Ski Ski, where are you at, my uh, friend? He's a Tampa fan. He, he, he wasn't good at this at all. <laughs> no, not at all. So originally I said, let's do the unicorn onesie because I had a whole bunch of unicorn onesies. But then I forgot they're all like petite running females that none of us will fit in. They're all like five foot nothing. Awesome. <laughs> so we're not going to be able to fit in those. So we're going to go back to the Spider-Man onesies. Back to Spider-Man, yeah. And then luckily the people at Target aren't going to be listening to this. But I say we leave the tags on. So <laughs> we <laughs> return them after. <laughs> Uh, maybe we go double or nothing hey. on the final invitational game. This, no, no, no. This we, message brought this to you by it. Target. 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 And I, 
I would say go to Amazon, but I feel like Amazon's taking over the world. They've become the new Skynet, so I, I think I'm going to start boycotting Amazon as much oh, as possible. Oh, now, now you want it? Dude, I told you this months ago that Amazon was Skynet. I told you months ago UCF was the best team in the nation, but you didn't listen to me then. Yeah, Are but, you listening okay, now? Skynet's much danger, more dangerous than UCF National Championship. I don't know. And saying. listen, nobody's saying that UCF is the best team in the nation. It's just... We don't know. You want to play. Yeah, you that's play. right. Just put it on play. the field. So, you know what? They proved it as much as anybody UCF's else. UCF's not afraid to play on the field. I hear you. All right, so let's go around and do our MVPs and wrap up our national championship special. I'll go first. Why don't you go first, Anthony? Because. All right, that was nice. Chris, go ahead. Auburn <laughs> as my MVP. Because if Auburn would have won this damn game, we wouldn't have this conversation. We would be okay. Everything would be normal. But you know what? That's fine. UCF upset the system, and now we got to burn it all down. I love so, the conversation. Yeah. Auburn, that's happened, Auburn couldn't handle that UCF speed, Auburn man. Got their ass kicked. Um, <laughs> the fans of Auburn, they did not show up oh, either. Dude, it they, was awful. Dude, they stayed. You know, they they were loud the though, camera. weren't they? They were ready at the beginning of the game. You could hear them. And then yeah, when they, they when they returned that kick that kickoff. They were going nuts. So I don't want to hear, again, I don't want to hear this. Well, we weren't motivated. Nobody cared. Right. I hear you. They, at the end of the game, when there was like a minute left, 50% of the stadium was completely empty. The other 50%, 100% full of black and gold. It was a very, very beautiful sight. Go ahead, Chris. What's your MVP uh, of the day? I, I don't want to take your MVP, so I'm going to go with Dan Lebetard. He Ooh. he kind of got this ball rolling for UCF. He kind of legitimized this whole national championship thing. Like straight out the gate, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was. It, the, all these days run together during the holiday season. I can't figure out <laughs> yes. which way is up or down. <laughs> um, but he basically said he was going to give them a trophy. He was claiming they were national champion, and it got this. It got the conversation going. And one of the tweets that I saw that I loved is that there's now a civil war in FBS. There's Ohio State fans that are jumping on this UCF bandwagon just because they know that they got, they didn't get their fair shot at the playoff or at the, the big gate. So why not jump on UCF's board and say, hey, mm-hmm. they went undefeated. So I'm hoping that more people legitimize, that it's not just UCF claiming it, but that other AP voters and stuff like that see that, hey, so there needs to be a change in college football. We've been calling for it for years, and you gave us this pathetic four-team invitational, and we're not satisfied. Got you. All right, I like it. So uh, I'm going to do my MVP. Um, I don't, I don't know who you thought I was going to do. There's a lot out there. I could Scott Frost, <laughs> um, Shaquem Griffin, Mackenzie Milton. I could go on and on. But local sports writer, I want to go ahead. No, not Bianchi. I'm go- giving it to the Bulldog, Mike Bianchi. Going on the Paul Feinbaum show and giving him shit and trolling him on his own show and just throwing daggers at Paul Feinbaum. Dude, Feinbaum deserved it. Bianchi represented the city of Orlando like a champ. I got to give him credit where it is due. And then uh, he's also throwing out, he's doing a, a column and he's throwing out tweets. He's all over the place. And he says, why does elitist Power 5 propagandists like Paul Feinbaum feel the need to reign on UCF's national championship? And I love it because you that's what they are, propagandists. They're wanting to spray the world with all of their knowledge from 50 years of bullshit to say that a team that is up and coming, that deserves all the credit in the world, should be... Uh, rained on like their parade doesn't matter. Guess what? This parade, this UCF National Championship parade, it matters. This is going to be a better parade than the 0-16 Cleveland Browns parade. This is the parade that matters to the rest of the world. This is why he is my MVP, along with every UCF fan that showed up at that stadium. Scott Frost, even though he went to Nebraska, he had a press conference where he said, hey, this is not right what UCF has been done to, done to this year. I'm gone, but I'm just letting you know this team is better than you're giving us credit for, and it is not fair the way they've been treated by the NCAA. I want to give everybody that has cheered on UCF, not you, Anthony, even though you just jumped <laughs> on the train, but Chris over That's here fine. wearing a Florida Gators sweatshirt in this freezing cold Orlando weather. 
representing UCF on game the mic. Game respect game, man. Got to respect it. And that is what I've got to say about that. And you like that? You like that? You like that? Not nah, top five. All right. All well, right. we appreciate everybody listening. Tune in next episode where we'll decide which one of Anthony's beer bottles will win the national championship. Jackasses. It's the one with the yellow snow. 